Hello, and welcome back to yet another episode of Mind of Steel. This show is the weekly delve into the pulsating cranium of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele. And today we have a particularly special delve because we are going to reveal Mark's most recent utterly preposterous call to Northumbria police. Now, anybody else would probably be charged with wasting police time after a call like this. So it's a testament to the patience of that policing organisation that they allow Mr Steele to get away with talking such utter nonsense. And as a special warning for today's episode, this show will have a somewhat hallucinatory property. After this episode, you may find yourself questioning the meaning of life, whether life itself exists, whether you exist. I made a complaint about the uh, deployment of a biochemical weapon on an unsuspecting population here in the United Kingdom. Now, since then, I was told by Northumbria Police to con my, contact my local MP. Oh dear, poor Mark. He tried to unload his portfolio of prima facie evidence onto uh, an unsuspecting operator of Northumbria Police, who suggested that he ought to bring that kind of correspondence to his MP. That would be Liz Twist, the, the MP for Blyden. But Liz Twist wasn't interested in hearing it anyway. She suggested that if there was evidence of a crime, it ought to be brought back to the police. Mark has come full circle. It's almost as if nobody wants to hear his complaint of terrible sinister crimes that only he knows exists. What is a conspiracy truther gonna do? I've sent all of the prima facie evidence to me, my local MP. I've had no response. I've actually contacted her office several times um, and I've made all of this information clear to me MP. I've been totally ignored. You're probably just as astonished to learn as I am that Liz Twist, the MP for the constituency of Bladen, which is the, the area that includes Gateshead, where Mark Steele lives. Well, apparently, Liz Twist is too busy to follow up on Mark Steele's correspondence, to attend all the meetings that he wants her to attend. <laughs> too busy to meet with Mark Steele. Can you imagine that? What kind of MP would be too busy to meet with Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist? And I'm sure right now you're feeling just as annoyed as Mark Steele must be feeling because hell hath no fury like a truther spurned. I've contacted her several times to go to meetings in Westminster where scientists, top people in the world, have actually been there to explain what this whole injections program was about. There's a lot more people going to die very shortly if they don't get the antidote to this bioweapon. This is all terribly confusing. Apparently, if Liz Twist doesn't do something which uh, Mark Steele hasn't specified, then a bunch of other people, which Mark Steele also hasn't specified, will meet some kind of terrible fate, also not specified. From the perspective of this police officer that he's talking to, what he wants of Northumbria police also has not been specified until this moment. This is where Mark Steele is about to drop the hammer on Liz Twist MP. So my complaint today is against, it's a criminal complaint of misconduct in public office by Liz Twist, an MP, my MP for Bladen, who I revealed all of this relevant information and it's absolutely damning the amount of people that are now dying. But like... Well, I bet Liz Twist is feeling pretty frightened right now. Mark Steele has publicly accused her of misconduct in public office, a very serious crime. The evidence? Well, Mark Steele has sent her letters, requested meetings with her, demanded that she attend public meetings with important scientists also not specified. And Liz Twist did not respond to any of these requests. Therefore, she must be guilty. As Mark is fond of saying without actually understanding those words, prima facie evidence of guilt. The bioweapon injection can be activated and will be activated in the fullness of time. 
it has some nanoparticulates in it that can then be activated uh, to kill people. It also has an ingredient, which I've, I've just getting the documents from the Surgeon General in Florida, where they've tested the vials, and the vials have what's called SV40. SV40 was a bioweapon developed by the CIA in the, in the 60s. Are you getting an idea of just how vast and convoluted this conspiracy is? It began in the 1960s, and it ended in Matt Hancock's text messages. The chip that Matt Hancock alludes to in his WhatsApp post, it's actually a nano meta material antenna. It was injected for the tracking and tracing and the termination of the people of this country. It's a termination technology. People often ask me, is Mark Steele a con man? Or is he just completely mad? I think that's a, a false dichotomy because there's another possibility. What if he's high? What if this entire thing is some kind of hallucinatory trip as a result of consuming approximately 100 micrograms of LSD before beginning this phone call? Perhaps the entire thing is, is some kind of bad acid trip that Mark Steele is on. You may have noticed some strange graphics in the background as Mark Steele was talking. Well, that's my attempt to illustrate through the crude mechanisms of video editing, the, uh, the level of hallucination that Mark Steele is probably undergoing. So as this video progresses, I want you to look out for those signs and tell me if you think they comport with the level of unreality in what Mark Steele is presently saying. So if people don't get the antidote to this bioweapon, and they won't do while we'll have politicians who are ignoring the excess deaths in their area, as well as directors for public health, who have contacted all the directors for public health in this area, and each one of them has ignored all of the evidence in relation to this. But like Mark is really struggling to figure this one out for himself. He can't understand why it is that all of the local councillors, these public health directors of whom he speaks, and now his own MP, the woman charged by the people of that constituency to represent them all in Westminster. Why, she of all people is ignoring the, uh, the man famous for shouting in front of government buildings and shooting a teenager. Why would anyone ignore Mark Steele when, uh, when he has something that he feels he has to say? Well, you can't go on ignoring a man like Mark Steele for very long until he decides to take action. So let's now pay attention to what Mark Steele intends to do. He has been, Liz Twist has been totally and absolutely missing in action. She has deliberately and willfully hasn't uh, done anything about this issue. It's consequently, uh, it's, it, it's a criminal act to cover up genocide and the woman needs to be arrested for her inaction for her omissions in relation to this particular crime. So now we know why Mark Steele is phoning the police. He wants them to arrest Liz Twist MP for the terrible crime of not listening to him. It's a brilliant plan. Something this brilliant could only form from the mind of a Save Us Now operative. Do you remember a few months ago, we had the bizarre and perplexing saga of modern day jester. <laughs> remember, he was trying to arrest the CEO of St. Albans Council for, for what? Well, apparently, for maintaining lampposts, which is a terrible crime because modern day jester and Mark Steele believe that lampposts are deadly cyber weapons. Well, Mark Steele has gone one further. He wants Liz Twist arrested for the terrible crime of not listening to Mark. She has to, she's only, she only has one purpose and that's to represent the, uh, the local area. She's not yet to represent the World Economic Forum, an international terrorist organization who are planning mass murder on behalf of our party leader, Kia Stormer. Oh, once again, Mark hasn't thought this through. He wants the police to arrest the MP based 
only on the, the dubious alleged crime of just that she didn't pay enough attention to him. He, he's like a, he's like a spoiled brat. The, the, the absolute worst thing you can do to Mark is, is ignore him. Which is why if Mark were honest with himself, Mind of Steel is actually his favourite programme because I pay him more attention than any other human being on the entire planet, e even more than his mum. Probably, right, I probably pay more attention to Mark Steele than Mark Steele's wife. And you know what, Mark? You should thank me for that, right? Because you've actually got what you wanted. Your entire life, you wanted to be recognised and known for doing stuff, D despite the fact that you're a failure and you're not particularly academic and you talk a lot of crap but somebody is paying attention to you. Somebody cares. Mind of Steel now has over 20,000 subscribers and we're all on edge. We, we all can't wait to know what crazy thing Mark Steele will come out with next. So Mark, shouldn't you be happy with that? Why don't you go to the people who love you? <laughs> Ignore Liz Twist. She's not worth your attention anyway. <laughs> she was never good for you, Mark. We're the people who, who want to be with you. You should want to be with us. Come on, just say some more crazy things to keep us amused. That's what you've been put on earth for. If you can't do your job, right, like I said, so you're on, I'll give you a good warning, right, we will arrest these criminals, right? And, and if the police can't uphold the law, then we will have to take over. It's as simple as that. This has gone to a really dark place. At the start of this call, I thought Mark Steele was just complaining about his local MP. We're all allowed to complain about our politicians. Most of us have the misfortune of living in constituencies where we didn't vote for the, the party that is representing us. It's, it's the natural order of things that we should be unhappy with our elected leadership. That's just often how it works in a democracy. But Mark has gone to a completely different place. He is now publicly threatening to abduct an MP for his deluded political reasons. That's a public threat against a, a civic official. And I don't think he should be allowed to get away with that. You just can't, in a, in a free society, go threatening violence to our elected representatives. And I think there's plenty of evidence now that that is what Mark Steele intends to do. He literally told Northumbria police that he intends to kidnap Liz Twist MP. Look, I know Northumbria police are panicking, okay, but I can tell you now, this is going to come out. If we have to go and arrest her, I'm putting you on notice now. If we have to arrest her and somebody gets hurt, it will be Northumbria police having to defend themselves in front of a judge to say why they didn't do that job. That was a display of, now look what you made me do, that would embarrass Laurel and Hardy. Mark Steele is literally saying that if somebody, quite possibly Liz Twist MP, gets injured while Mark Steele attempts to abduct her, then a judge, a judge in a criminal court, would most likely hold the police responsible for Mark Steele's crimes. If Mark Steele injures somebody, he thinks it would be the police's fault and not his own, not him and his loopy supporters, this Save Us Now gang who are hell-bent on causing all kinds of trouble. Wow, that, that is massive amounts of projection. But it also fits with Mark Steele's long-standing patterns of behavior. You remember the, the teenage girl that he shot way back in 1993. Well, even though that bullet that, that he shot from his gun lodged in the brain of a, of a poor defenseless teenage girl and, and caused her to, to have many years of inability to walk, well, Mark Steele has never once admitted responsibility for this. He, he's just explaining his entire worldview on life, which is that he doesn't take responsibility for anything he does. It's always somebody else's problem. And that's why Mark Steele is a genuinely dangerous person to have around in society, because he thinks that it's his right to abduct an elected official 
and get away with it. Because if he does that, it's not his fault. That's just how he thinks. So, yeah, I think somebody should ring up Northumbria police and say, what on earth are you doing? Allowing somebody like Mark Steele to publicly threaten to kidnap a member of parliament and get away with it. It makes no sense at all to me. I didn't expect that you could possibly do your job because you're panicking because Northumbria police know exactly what's going on. So what was the purpose of any of this? Why did Mark Steele just spend half an hour on the phone to Northumbria police complaining about Liz Twist MP, but knowing full well that they weren't going to take any action against her? Right? Was it just some kind of loopy desire to be listened to? Was it Mark Steele's expression of his vivid imagination? Or, or was it, as I previously hypothesized, that he's off his tits? Or, or maybe it is something a lot darker. Maybe this is some kind of confession, that he really does intend to take some kind of violent action against Liz Twist. And, and maybe he really is trying to assemble his goofy pals, like modern day Jester, who's repeatedly tried to arrest public officials in the past. Maybe that's what they really intend to do. Maybe Mark Steele is telling us all who he really is. And maybe, maybe Northumbria police ought to listen because this isn't a safe thing to do. He's a weird and dangerous man and he's just told us all that he's going to take his crazy notion of justice into his own hands. Um, the conversation number for now is 525 today's date. 525. Thank you very much, sweetheart. Okay. Thanks for that. Well, hopefully, uh, if you get arrested, then we'll not have to do that, but we'll be watching very closely. Okay, thanks now. Bye-bye. Hasn't it been another completely wild ride into the zany world of the mind of steel? We've spent half an hour with Mark Steele as he desperately tries to convince a police officer from the Northumbrian police force that she has to arrest Liz Twist MP. It doesn't seem to have gone very well, but the conversation took a very dark turn at the end. It was no longer a case of a, a crazy old man ranting his nonsense down the telephone. It became something far more dark and sinister threats to commit an act of violence against a public official. And Mark Steele did not feel any embarrassment about that because I got this video from his Telegram channel. He's proud that he threatens public officials with violence. He thinks that's a normal and sensible thing to do, which is why I have to bring it to everybody else's attention. I think this is an absolutely terrible thing to do. And I think Northumbria police might be missing a trick. If, if you think Mark Steele is just some doddering old codger who says crazy things down the phone to get a rise, well, maybe that's what he is. But he is also a man who recklessly shot a teenager as his way of settling a, a drunken pub brawl. He's somebody who's very quick to anger, very thin-skinned, and doesn't really have any kind of common sense when it comes to settling disputes peacefully. So I wouldn't want to be Liz Twist if Mark Steele was in the area, because I know Mark Steele would be out to cause trouble. Ah, oh, well, I'm sorry it had to end that way, but uh, not every episode of Mind of Steel is going to be a, a laugh-out-loud humdinger of comedy foldy roles. Maybe next week's episode will be. You never know, because I don't even know what I'm going to be making in next week's episode. Um, well, hasn't it been fun? And if you want to join me for a discussion, if you, if you have any complaints, if you think I've maybe misjudged Mark Steele, please hop on over to the Telegram channel. You'll find the address right at the top of our YouTube page. And tell me how you feel about Mark Steele. But if Telegram isn't your style, I'd love to see your comments. Just leave one below. And... Uh, I will see you in one week's time.